Hi everyone, welcome to this video for D100 Space. This is episode 6 and we're going to take a look at the port phase. Uh, if you didn't see the previous video that I've done, we done a basic space cruise test and in the video before that we've done some jump tests so there's some rules there to check out if you haven't seen them I'll put the video links in the description below so you can check them out uh, well worth a look but uh, let's, let's get on with this episode and take a look at the port phase so the port phase begins on page 31 and there's a series of steps that you can perform and uh, they're all optional that none of them are required you basically can travel to a spaceport and perform the options that are available to you so the first thing to be aware of is that there's two types of spaceports there's space stations which have got like a cog symbol and there's military bases which has got a, a kind of planetary type uh, icon there and when you go to them in the port phase section it tells you with an icon as to what's available at that port so for instance if you went to a military dock you could use the medic the armorer but not the trade halls because it doesn't show that icon at the trade halls and then when you turn the page there's various other things that are available to you as well so there's um, you could use the supplies at a military dock uh, you could use the training droids at the military dock but you couldn't use them at a space station for instance and so forth and then um, when you're ready to actually play it we, what we do is I'll go through each step individually so we can take a look at so step one is the medic now that's available at the space station and the military dock and it's just a, a, a basic way of going and visiting a doctor at, at the sick bay in the port and repairing your lost health points for 20 credits per restored point so if our captain was wounded we could spend 20 credits and then restore any of these lost uh, health points that we've got there so that's pretty straightforward the second one is the armorer the player can remove any number of shaded pips from the armor's damage track by paying its fixed cost so this uh, adventurer, this uh, captain doesn't actually have any armour at all. But let's say they had some armour. Let's, let's put some on and demonstrate this in a bit more detail. So we can also cover two options here about how you repair armour as well. So let's say we had some uh, a Kevlar Plus vest. Okay, so that that assigned to the body area so Kevlar or Kevlar Plus vest and it's an A1 it costs 150 credits okay so we're on Kevlar Plus 150 credits and it costs 30 to repair Okay, so let's say we was just finishing an away mission and we'd suffered two pips of damage. <clears throat> All you would need to do is you could go to the armorer at either a space station or a military dock and you could pay its fixed cost there. So you'd pay 30 to remove one pip of damage and another 30 to remove the second pip. So it costs you 60 in total and then you could rub them out and deduct 60 from your credits and then you basically repaired your armor there so that's pretty straightforward uh, only available at the trade halls is the captain may sell any number of items that, that, that have a credit value from the following sections so you could sell items from your any items stored in here that have, that have got a credit value you could sell from the large equipment pack the small equipment pack and the armor the armor section here and the weapons section here and also the utility belts section so basically any equipment that you've got stored in those areas you couldn't sell them in the cybercon area okay so that's what's excluded from that 
Uh, once you've chosen anything that you want to sell, and if say for instance armor was damaged, let's say this armor was damaged here, uh, there's a chart that you can look at to see how much that would actually be worth. Damaged items that you sell are going to be worth less than fully repaired armor. Uh, and it's all cost relative, so let's take a look at that chart there. So if we're selling our uh, Kevlar Plus vest, you'd go to table V. Okay, and you would look up the Kevlar Plus is total value, which was undamaged, 150 credits. Find 150 credits here. It's got two pips of damage, so you'd look up the two pips of damage there, and it tells you that it will that you could sell that item for 90 credits. So it takes into account the um, the number of pips of damage that is received already. So it saves you working it out. You can use this as a quick chart if you're selling lots of damaged item. It's quite useful. Okay, so um, cyber, it's got a note here. It says Cybercon implants that, that have been installed must first be removed by a skilled surgeon. So that's why you can't uh, sell your Cybercon items there. And then it says you may also, while you're at the trade halls, you may also search the trade halls for items to buy. And you may run up. You may roll a number of times equal to your captain's rep. So our captain has got four reps. So we would be able to choose amongst these following tables and roll four times. So table A, T A, T B, T C, and W. So they're all these, all the tables that are marked with a with a space station icon. Okay. So let's take a look at that. So any tables that show that symbol there, you would be able to roll on. So we could roll up to four times amongst any of those tables. So that's table A, table T, T A, T B, trappings, items, T C, and table W. So you get to make four rolls, not on each table, but across those four tables. And then anything that you roll, you can then effectively buy and add to your, um, can add to your adventure sheet uh, providing you've got the credits to spend it on okay so that's how that works let's go back to that port phase so we've covered the trade halls you remember you can only do that at a space station not at a military dock okay the next thing is supplies so um, there's uh, it says supplies are in a short supply and restricted to a few per customer Okay, so it's based on reps, so you get to uh, buy a number of supplies from table N needed and uh, plus your rep, so it's 20 plus your rep. So in our case we've got four, we'll be able to buy 24 items from table N. Okay, so table N, um, is, is your needed table and there's all manner of things on here that you could buy and you don't need to roll for these you can just pick and choose them so if we bought a decoder that would use up one of our, our 24 allowance and it would cost us five credits if we bought 10 decoders then it would use up 10 of our allowance and uh, it would cost us 50 credits and so forth and you just pick and choose what you would like to buy from this table so you don't roll on this on this occasion when you're actually playing a port phase. There's things like um, armor piercing rounds that you can put on a dex weapon and it improves um, uh, the, the enemy that you fight will suffer minus two defense from its attack. Okay, and if you were, if you were to buy them, then it's a case of in that case you could shade these uh, these uh, these little pips here to signify that you've got these different types of rounds loaded to your weapon. So we've actually got a heavy blaster pistol, which is a dex based weapon. So we could buy explosive rounds or we could buy uh, armor piercing rounds. And each round that you buy, you could just shade them. So each weapon could only effectively hold uh, five of each type of round. Okay. Um, so that's the needed table.
and that's available at both the star system and the military dock. Okay, training droids is only available at a military dock and this is a way for you to improve your stats and your skills. So let's take a bit of a look at that. Okay, the cap, uh, it says the captain may perform some training with some training bots to improve their skills and characteristics. The training for this facilities vary greatly across spaceports with the most famous in the galaxy being given access to the highest quality droids and drones. The captain's rep plays an important part in deciding which establishment they are granted access to. Therefore, the captain's rep value sets the maximum number of pips that can be shaded on the experience track of both skills and characteristics. So we've got a rep of four, so technically we could shade in four pips on our uh, characteristics or our skills. Okay, and also we can increase our, intelli uh, our health point value by one point for each rep as well. So we've got four rep, and providing we add the cash, we could shade in, say, for example, um, say two strength pips, we could shade in one intelligence pip, that's free, and then we could add one to our primary health. So that would increase our current as well. So we'd add, uh, change 21 to uh, 20 to 21, and then any think that any damage that we'd suffered there would also gain one pip there as well as long as it didn't go over 21 okay so if you're advancing a when you're performing the training droid droids section if you're advancing a characteristic or a skill that's got one of these experience stars shaded it does not increase the number of pips shaded they're only learned when you're actually that bonus only really applies when you're actually um, making a, a role and, and gaining it through experience roles. Okay, so um, the cost to that is quite a lot. So to, um, it costs 200 credits to shade a pip on an experience track on a skill, and it costs 2000 credits to shade a pip on your characteristics and it costs 20,000 credits to add one point of health okay so that's um, that's quite an expensive way of increasing your health points but if you've got plenty of cash it's well worth doing that because the higher your uh, primary health point is the longer you're going to be able to survive on away missions and so forth okay so step six cybercon is available at the space station and the military dock. Any uninstalled implants that haven't been added to your Cybercon unit, they um, would be recorded in the small equipment pack. You can sell them during step three, I think it is, of the trade horse, the one we covered prior. Uh, and you can also sell patches, any Cybercon patches that you've got, you can sell for 200 credits as well. Uh, if you've got an installed implant, if an implant's in your Cybercon unit and you wish to sell it, it's going to cost you, it's going to, in effect, you're only going to receive 400 credits when you sell it. So if we had one written in here and we decided to sell it, uh, the cost that we would get from that is not 800, but it would be reduced to 400. And that's because it needs to, you need to pay for a surgeon to actually work on the unit itself and actually get it removed. So that's quite important. Uh, any implants that you sell from the Cybercon unit, you get 400 for, and any that you sell from the small equipment pack, you will get 800. The other thing is, is that while you're performing this phase, you can also uh, roll a number of times on table I implants equal to the captain's rep, and you can buy implants for a thousand credits each. So you could, in effect, bolster your implants by making that roll on table I. Uh, we, we've got a rep of four, so we could roll four times on there. And it's just a case of adding it to the slot on your Cybercon unit. So step seven is the cargo dock. 
available at the space station or the military dock and basically you're free to buy and sell cargo found on table Y cargoes so you would if you wanted to perform this you'd go to table Y and you would find the star system that you're currently in we're in Vinoir, we're a rebel base in Vinoir so we'd use this uh, row of buy and sell prices here so anything that we bought we would add to our starship and anything that we sold we would um, deduct from our cargo space at the back here and we would then sell so let's say we wanted to uh, buy some more chemicals uh, they would cost us 50 credits we would add one to our chemicals on the back of the sheet here so I've got already got one so I'd add one making it two it's just a case of deducting the credits so that's another minus 50 and you can do that as, as long as you've got the money to pay for it you can then sell as much as you want as well while you're at that star system and generally it's a good idea to uh, buy when the prices are low and sell when the prices are high okay so next up is the shipyard it's available at a space station and a military dock and this is where the captain can buy and sell modifications and actual starships as well uh, the way it kind of works is, is if you think that the captain can only be in possession of one starship at a time uh, apart from during space combat after a space combat where uh, you've managed to capture an enemy starship you will either take possession of that starship and make it your own or you will tow it uh, if you make that starship your own you'll actually be towing your own vessel so there's rules for that that's explained in space combat and we'll probably go into that in more detail when we do a video about actual space combat so that's something to bear in mind um, you can sell any number of modifications that are actually on your current starship uh, you get half the price shown on table air modifications so you're not going to get full price for these so we can see that the particle scoop is uh, got a value of a thousand so that would technically mean if we sold that we'd get 500 credits for that so that's how that works uh, you may sell your towed starship you basically just uh, delete the tow value there and add it to your credit at the front so like I say if you've managed to capture an enemy starship so but when you're buying let's take a look at that so the captain may search the shipyard for modifications and starships and the player rolls a number of times equal to the captain's rep value and looks up each result on table M or table S. So you can do either or, you could roll, uh, we've got a rep of four at the moment so we could roll maybe twice on table M and twice on table S to see what's available. Uh, you're permitted to buy the modifications or the starships rolled so any of them that you roll um, you need space so each starship has got a mods value that's the number of modifications that can be fitted to that starship at the moment we've got a fast attack craft and it tells us we've got a modifier uh, value of two so we can only actually equip two modifications so if we wanted to add another modification we would also need to sell a modification first we can buy a new starship and um, let's look at that so if the captain is buying a starship to replace their current one they must they first sell all modifications fitted on the starship so you'll be receiving half the value of those modifications uh, you, you can't sell you can't transfer modifications over to a new starship they need to be sold off first so you're, you're better off selling those modifications first you get half the value and also uh, you'll receive half of the ship's value found on table S so we've got all this recorded on here so if we wanted to sell our fast attack craft along with our particle scoops and mining lasers we've got a total value here of 28, uh, 29 uh, 31,000 so we receive half of that half of 31,000 remove that from the uh, log sheet and then we would then add our new starship so what you you could do is you could roll for a star if you wanted to replace this starship you could roll for a starship first maybe make two rolls because we've got a rep of four so we can make two rolls on starships and if we found one we liked then we could then go ahead and add that starship 
to the sell, sell this starship here, add the new one, and then we've got two more chances to roll for modifications. So that's kind of like a, a good way of playing it as well. Uh, it tells us here as well, um, cargo crew and passengers can be transferred. So modifiers can't be transferred over, but any cargo we've got, any crew we've got on board and any passengers in the passenger manifest, we could actually move over into our new um, Starship should we buy it. Uh, it tells us that passengers that are not transferred will need to be compensated and so the compensation value would be 50 credits per passenger you did not transfer over so dumping passengers off uh, be, be, um, that haven't reached their destination you're gonna have to pay them some compensation so that's how that works um, your, the new Starship will begin brand new it will have a maximum power it's maximum life support and fuel on board so whatever the stats are up here you would then transfer to these places and of course you're gonna have to work out a new control modifier so you'll have to see the tech level and the tech instructions um, earlier on in the book to actually rework out that control modifier because that may have actually changed okay and also while you're at the shipyard you can go ahead and you can also pay 10 credits per one point of fuel so at the moment we're down to 18 fuel we could spend 10 credits to uh, increase that to 19 and we could do that multiple times as well so there's no rep restriction on that and also that applies to fuel as well so it's going to cost us 10 credits for fuel as well so you can go ahead and do that and when you're restoring that lost power first of all power gets restored to the current life support value so if it was below its maximum which is 40 in our case life support is there 40 if we had less than 40 any power that we restored to the starship would first go towards the power that's keeping life support active on the starship so let's say that was 35 um, the first five points of power that we restore to the starship actually goes to the life support value first and then anything over that five would then be um, given to the current power okay so that's kind of like how that works okay so next up is the missions board and the way the missions board works is only available at military docks and it, um, it uses the operations track and this uh, quest log here uh, this operations log here so you're allowed to have four active operations at one time if you go to a military dock and you've got some spare slots you can go ahead and you can use your rep and you can basically roll for uh, some new operations to see what happens let's let's take a look at that the operate rolling for operations is covered on page 26 and it tells us basically it goes through about these three slots and um, when you've got an active mission in play that you've actually need to have a cross in the, the actual operations box so we've got a cross there we've got this mission 15 to 16 is actually active and uh, is waiting for us to actually play that okay so what you do is to search for new ones you basically roll on table uh, O operations and um, you roll the D100 you search for an operation in that case we've rolled 03 and then certain rules would apply depending on this track so if we rolled we'll go through them step by step so if the player rolls an operation that has an unchecked box okay like all these ones here none of these have been checked uh, the, the its status is considered new and we can add it to a free slot on our active operations. So let's say we rolled um, a 25 and we fancied that mission. We looked up that mission on the operations log and we thought, yeah, we could handle that. We could then accept that mission. We'd add uh, M25 to a free slot here. So I'll put that in, M25 to 26. And then you'd put a cross through that little checkbox there to say it's now active so currently we would have two crosses active okay uh, if the box 
has a cross, the operation states is already active and not available and that operation role would be wasted. So had we rolled, say, uh, a 15, that when we started this, we would that would have already been active and that would have wasted one of our rep rolls. So we've got four rep rolls. Okay, and then if, it, if the box selected, if we rolled like we rolled at the beginning, we rolled 03, that checkbox there has been ticked. That means that we can choose from any unticked operation on this chart. So we can look through all these that are unchecked and we can select that. We would then add it to a free slot in the operations log and then we'd put a cross for it to say that that's now active. That's kind of like how it works. You continue to roll uh, for operations until um, the captain has four active operations or you've rolled a number of times equal to your rep. So I could roll again and again until either I run out of my rolls or um, there's no more operation slots available here. And that's basically how you roll for operations. Okay, so that then moves us on to the passenger lounge. So whenever we're in a space station, not a military dock, you can perform this. And basically you get to roll a number of times equal to your captain's rep value, which in our case is four. And whatever result you get on the passenger manifest, so uh, they've got all these numbers here, you get to add one passenger to that. And you can roll a number of times equal to your rep, so we can make four rolls. And then what would happen is, is while they're on board, you, they are taking up space. So you need to be aware of your current life support value. So the ship is capable of supporting life of 40 individuals because our life support is 40. So between crew and passengers, our starship can't have any more than 40 on board at one time. Okay, and like if if we're um, if we've got 40 on board and we start taking damage, or we've got 35 on board and we start taking damage, and our current power is reduced to zero, and then it goes to uh, minus figures that starts getting deducted from our current life support so if we if we was at zero uh, current power and we took another five damage of power then our current life support would be 35 if we had more than 35 on board then uh, some crew or passengers would actually be killed and your ship would be your captain would be liable for compensation for those deaths uh, also if uh, passengers are killed it's 50 uh, credits of compensation and if your crew are killed it's 50 credits of compensation so that's something to be aware of when you're boarding passengers it it also if you end up having to jettison uh, passengers um, into space there's also uh, an escape pod cost as well so all these escape pods are going to end up costing you 50 credits per individual that uses an escape pod so there's a slight risk involved in taking on passengers but basically what you would do is you would roll the dice or roll 20 so you'd find result 20 there that's one passenger and then you do that four times because our rep is four so that's going to the star system a so i could add another passenger there uh, 10 that's uh, the star system c and we'll do it one more time 25 so that's star system G and like I say you can you can have as many passengers on board there's no um, delivery time you can deliver them whenever you go to that star system as soon as you perform uh, I think it's as soon as you land in a star system let's check that uh, yeah you simply go to the star system itself uh, you drop off the passenger and you see for each one of those uh, passengers at that star system you will get a, a hundred credits so it's a good way of like taking on board uh, passengers if you've got the life support value free it's a good way of taking on board passengers and um, getting a bit of quick cash just as and when you deliver them to these actual uh, these actual star systems okay so the last thing is number 11 crew hire and fire and you can do this at both the space station and the military dock and the way it works is is up to your captain's rep value you can decide to board crew take on board crew you can select any any of the choices that are given bridge crew engineers 
mining ops, navigators and so forth. And you can just basically add, so we've got, a, uh, our captain's got a rep of four. So we could just choose automatically to add four bridge crew. The only exception to that is, is you must have available life support. So that means out of all your passengers on board and your crew on board, you can't exceed your um, current life support value. So that's something to be aware of. If we had uh, 40 on board, we couldn't add any more because our current life support is 40. Uh, if, um, as we said in the passenger description, if our life support drops below that um, number of crew and passengers that we've got on board, then they will all, the uh, crew or passengers will perish and die. And for that, you're going to have to pay compensation. It's 50 credits for crew. Uh, any that are jettisoned or removed when you're not in a port phase will have to use escape pods, which you'll have to account for as well. One escape pod per crew member. And then at the beginning of each uh, port phase, whenever you play a port phase, you're going to have to pay uh, compensation and replenish your escape pods. So you're going to have to pay those costs whenever you begin a port phase. Uh, these crew, they aid you on certain activities. So if we take a look at um, this handy sheet, we can see that if we've got navigators on board here, it's going to improve our jump tests, pilots and for space crews. If we're doing asteroid mining, uh, mining op operatives are going to help us with those tests. So they can be quite useful. Where you're sort of missing out on certain um sort of abilities like for instance uh on this test here this jump test we've got a, um, a test result of 60 we need to roll 60 or below that's because we've got 10 navigators on board but when we was moving between star systems we didn't have any pilots on board so that dropped to 50. so they can be quite useful for bolstering some of these tests that you need um, however, they do cost you at some point in the game when you complete a, uh, an operation. If you've got any crew on board, first of all, you're going to look up the operation's reward value. So let's say we had a reward value of plus 300 credits. We would then need to pay our crew as well. So uh, I've got 14 crew on board. So you'd look up the column that's between the value that you've got, so 11 to 20 and we'd look it up and we'd only actually gain uh, because we've got to pay our crew we'd only actually end up out of that 3000 actually getting two 2400 credits so we'd actually have to award the crew and pay them uh, that 600 so that's the downside of having crew so they're useful but only really useful if you're if you've got gaps in some of the activities that you wish to actually uh, perform Okay, and then the real last thing of this is if you've got any unforeseen costs. So what that means is if you lack funds to actually settle up and pay for some of the things that have um, occurred during the game and you can't put yourself in debt to live. This will be things like fines, compensation or escape pods that must be paid for or when you've got a docking fee that must be paid and you're out of credits. Um, Whenever you're forced to pay a cost and you, you haven't got enough credits, you may record a negative value on the credits. So you can actually go into negative values. And like I say, you can't go into negative values deliberately uh, by buying lots of cargo and things like that. So it goes on to tell you that you can't use a medic, repair armor, use trade halls, buy supplies, buy implants, buy cargo, buy modifications or a starship if the act of the transaction would leave the captain in negative credits. And um, at any time during the game, the captain finds they are without a starship and lack the credits to buy another. They are provided with a shuttlecraft. That's on table S result one. Uh, this is supplied to you by uh, a wealthy benefactor who takes pity on them and the player adds the starship to the log sheet. If the if you ha end up in that situation where you haven't got any credits or a starship and uh, you need that that uh, shuttlecraft and then you eventually go on to actually be able to sell it um, you don't receive any credits for that sale so although you've got a, 
uh, shuttlecraft on board, it's probably best to record it as a zero value. That's kind of like how uh, unforeseen costs work. Okay, so that pretty much concludes this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, it's been quite a long one, but I think uh, it's worth it. We've covered everything that needed covering. And um, like I said, I hope you enjoyed it. Do check out the other videos in the series. And until next time, take care.